Kayla is Starrail's most underrated buffer, and today I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to play her like the debuff god she is. Recently, there's been chatter about how Silverwolf completely power creeps or throws Kayla out the window, myself included. However, something that people forget about when it comes to Honkai Starrail is that you can use two characters together. What's more is that unlike in other games where putting two debuffs together overlap or give you diminishing returns, Kayla and Silverwolf's defense reductions stack additively. What the fu- Moving along, Kayla's game plan is pretty dependent on the team and build you have with her, but ultimately it comes down to one of two approaches. The first is to simply use your skill, basics, and ultimate as they come off cooldown, and the second is to find enough energy regeneration to use your skill and ultimate on the same first turn. Though this won't be consistent in later turns, there's good value when you're able to use your skill and ultimate back to back to set up damage dealers. The exact way you get the 110 energy for her ultimate is up to you and once again dependent on the fight. However, that being said, energy rope is great value on supports and Kayla's talent gives additional energy of debuffing an enemy. If more energy is needed, we'll get to the light cone and relic sections later. Just know that a great way to start off an encounter is with Pela's skill into ultimate. Big brain, big damage. Depending on your build and approach to using Pela, she has a variety of light cones that are usable. The newly added Silver Wolf light cone is great if looking to use your ultimate turn one, and the 40% effect hit rate that comes with it is no joke either. Resolution Shines as Pearls of Sweat is another perfect option for Pela should you want to stack debuffs. Though Pela herself does have a defense reduction on ultimate, this light cone adds an additional debuff to add consistency to Payless value. The other light cones that give effect hit rate, like Void, are options should you somehow not have the tutorial light cone or resolution, but these two are head and shoulders above the rest. On a side note, Payla herself does not offer much outside of the debuffs that she has in her kit, so maximizing the value of these debuffs or adding new debuffs like with resolution is king. I would like to make a special shout out to Silverwolf's light cone should you have it, but while you technically can implant an Aether Code as Payla, this is pretty ridiculous and extra. She herself doesn't do significant damage with attack, crit rate, etc. So this light cone works, but is definitely better used on Silver Wolf herself. Payless traces are somewhat confusing when looking at her overall identity. On one hand, most of the upgrades to her skills or traces include damage, whereas her actual usability and damage output places her as a pseudo DPS breaker at best. This confusion is sprinkled and prolonged throughout the entire trace tree. Her major traces increase Payless' own damage to debuff enemies, or increase her damage on next attack after using a skill to remove buffs. Now this may work for a character like Silver Wolf who dips into both debuffing and dealing damage simultaneously, but testing Payless' damage would indicate otherwise for her. With that in mind, the average investment for Payla would include upgrading her major trace for effect hit rate, her talent for additional energy regeneration, and her ultimate for increased defense shred. When considering the game plan we outlined for Payla, upgrading the debuff or supportive aspects in her kit helped the most. In general, supports need upgrades to the chance of landing debuffs or how much they provide with buffs, and Payla is no different. Increase defense reduction amount, get her ultimate turn one by upgrading her talent, Profit. The right relic and planetary set for Pela is dependent on the build and playstyle that you choose, but a few sets stand out from the rest. The first set that works for Pela is the always versatile Musketeer. This set has proven itself to be multifunctional, easy to farm, and easily swappable given the speed that it provides. But a set like the Eagle of Twilight Line can also provide value with its advanced forward passive. Ultimately, deciding between the two and relics in general will come down to which you have better sets of. And for planar sets, Fleet of the Ageless always has your back since the defense and team wide attack percent is unbeatable as of 1.1. However, However, if needing more energy or attempting to use Payless Ultimate Turn 1, Von Wach can close the gap with its added energy regeneration. Side note, a lot of people like investigating break effect and seeing if a debuffer can invest into the stat to gain value. But based on Payless element and the spread of stats you would need to make it work, Payla can do without break effect. On the topic of stats, let's get into the main and substat portion of this relic section. For chess, the main stat is dependent on the light cone and overall spread of stats that you have. Admittedly, a lot of things are dependent on each other, but that's because Payla is a very stat focused character. In any case, the main stat changes from an effect hit rate to a defensive one once you reach 90 effect hit rate, with her major trace, but that's for a different section. Pela's boot, like everyone else in Honkai Star Oil, can stay on speed considering how valuable turn taking is, and her rope stays energy regen. Despite the several indicators trying to get you to build her like an ice DPS, you don't want her on an ice planar sphere. A defensive main stat like HP% percent or defense% percent will work wonders, especially when she herself is on the less tanky side. Use Musketeer or Eagle depending on which you have a better set of, take defensive main stats, use effect hit rate chest, energy regen rope, and get to debuffing. Pela's Eidolons are decent, but do reinforce the confused identity narrative that Hoyaverse has designed for her. In line with her traces, her Eidolons skew toward her dealing damage or wanting to be a high skill point consuming character. But this doesn't line up considering her lack of 
actual damage. If we delve down into the Eidolons themselves, however, Payless first is pretty good. Five energy whenever an enemy is defeated adds to the overall energy economy and leads to more ultimates, but finding instances with reviving slash respawning enemies is less common. Regardless, we take those. Her second Eidolon, increasing her own speed for two turns, is nice especially when trying to stay ahead of your damage dealers, but the real value as debuff for Payla comes from her fourth Eidolon. This adds a 100% base chance ice res reduction for two turns and is great value. To be honest, I'm surprised it's not the sixth Eidolon. The actual sixth Eidolon furthers the why is this here line of questioning by adding additional ice damage when hitting a debuffed enemy. Considering she herself doesn't do much damage at all, this addition is really out of place. That aside, Payla has decent Eidolons and is a four star, can't complain. Unlike most other supports or buffers, Payla is more niche. This doesn't mean she is bad though, since you'll always have a place with Yanching or when needing to double down on defense reduction. That being said, if looking to deal big damage while on the side of accessibility, look no further than picking Payla with Servile and Don Hung, followed by a flex offensive or defensive pick. In scenarios where protection or shielding is necessary, March or the Fire Trailblazer works well. By contrast, if no fear of death is present, running Asta will complement the double DPS team and allow for faster clears. It should be noted that Payla and Asta together provide an absurd certain amount of value even as characters that are easy to obtain, but the real insanity here is having two DPS who can gain speed buff, attack increase, and slam a defense shredded enemy. Don Hung and Servile's damage is no joke. Now if we allow for more freedom in roster choice, Payla has several teams that she excels in. The first is an ice focused composition involving Japard, Yanching, herself, and either March, a healer, or Silverwolf. The three options for the final spot are conditional like everything else in Payla's life, but each option plays an important role in allowing her to shine. March allows for cleansing, shielding, and pseudo healing if you have her idol on. Silverwolf lets you apply weakness break and stack the defense reductions on her and Payless ultimates, and Luocha allows for offensive healing while providing debuffs and strips. I know I put like five side notes in this video already for this guy, but Luocha is pretty crazy and if you haven't already thought about it, consider pulling for him. This specific lineup is great for encounters with enemies weak to ice and is especially potent against later floors of memory chaos. That being said, another equally viable composition involves running Payla alongside Yukong, Bronya, Silverwolf, or Tingyu. This team is the typical blow everything up in one turn and has great synergy when using it to support a character like Sila, Don Hong, Sushang, etc, etc. The stats gained from these supports ultimates or skills gain insane value once adding a defense reduction on Payla's ultimate. And that isn't even mentioning the absurdity of Payla and Silverwolf stacking defense shred together which again, just unreal. Now I know Payla is a 1.0 released character, but that really shouldn't take away from how powerful she can be. A lot of clears during early Memory of Chaos involved a freeze team including Payla, and that wasn't just a fluke. Admittedly, characters like Silverwolf, Tingyun, Branya, and Yukong do have merit themselves, but I think it's dishonest to rate Payla as anything but a great debuffer. Aside from her being an additive defense shred, which by the way should be enough to justify using her, she has access to an additional debuffer light cone with resolution. This in combination with the ice res reduction and strip that she has on skill, really I do start to add up. Again, I do want to make clear that she does feel worse than Silverwolf in some situations, but simply being able to pair the two is insane value by itself. That's going to be it for this video though, guys. Any form of defense reduction is out of this world, and I hope that this guy taught you how to play Payla better, or helped you understand her kit. If you have a sec though, you can check out my Twitch, Discord, and Twitter to find out what theory crafting I'm doing, or if you need any help. And of course, make sure to like, let me know what you liked or disliked about Payla in the comment section, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe. See you all next time. Bye-bye.